Hey everybody, my name is Mike Strip, and today we're going to go over how to master audio with Ableton. So the first thing I need you to do is open up your effects, and I need you to create a series of three effects. You need to create basically an EQ, and that'll be your first one in the chain that's applied to the master channel. Uh, the second one we're going to go with is um, going to be with a multi-band compressor, and the third one is going to be a limiter. And then after the limiter, we're going to go with basically a clipper or a very simple limiter that has no controls to it, just volume. And then after that, a spectrum to see everything on our charts. So I'll go over that one by one while we do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our um, equalizer, our low pass filter at uh, 37. And uh, the reason why we're doing that is because on the subwoofer, uh, the sound is going to Anything really underneath that you're not going to hear, but that's as low as like a lot of the subs that come out nowadays can reach. Um, we're going to adjust that so that there's a tail uh, coming in on the first one. And then our last one is important um, as well, so which we're going to go over next. So we're using a 8-point uh, EQ. The last one, we're going to make it tail out. And the number I'd like to run in there is 12.5 uh, kilohertz. The reason why I'd use 12.5 uh, kilohertz is because the uh, audio, anything past that's a little tinny. Um, and personally, I really don't like the sound of anything past that, but we're going to have it fade out. So if there are any frequencies past that, you will um, be able to hear it, but just not so much that it's destroying your ears. Um, I also want to keep on uh, my number one and number eight. I like, like to keep it as close to... Um, you know, the baseline is possible. Uh, a little bit of pump sometimes, like I have on the uh, number one here, just because, of course, we're going to be increasing things because it's dance music and we do have a kick drum that needs to be pretty loud. So that's going to add a little bit of rumble to it. So remember to make sure those gains are in the right spots, too. Uh, next one is we're going to isolate each, um, you know, EQ channel. So I'm going to kind of listen to the track on its own just so we can hear uh, how everything sounds. And then what I'm going to do next is select the um, effect of the audio on the equalizer and have it, um, of course, tune it either up or down, depending on our mix. So I'm going to move my way down to the EQ here. I'm going to click it, and you see um, we'll play the track, but I'm going to kind of tune it to see where it is. So you'll see the area behind is the gray area. That's our visuals to tell you where. It's kind of similar to what the spectrum does, but it's giving our vis us a visual uh, representation of the EQ. And then adaptive EQ kind of softens everything and kind of blurs everything together. I like really uh, pointy lines so I can hear stuff. You can, of course, A and B your edits there as well. But I like to have things set up where you'll be able to hear um, everything distinctly so I don't adapt my EQ, uh, my EQ. Of course you can, but I'm not going to. Um, so the next step is I'll listen to another band of the EQ. But of course, I'm also watching this gain at the corner here. This gain we'll, we'll go into later, but we're just going to make sure nothing's going into the red zone. And we'll, we're going to reference that throughout our mastering that nothing will go into the red zone. This is very important. So we'll go into uh, number two. I'm just going into number three here. I'm going over and just kind of tuning the mix on this one. So you're going to apply this and so on and so forth. And I won't, really won't need to repeat myself too much. Um, but certain EQ parameters will, um, you'll start to get like a pattern. You'll start to realize, you know, where things go in terms of like where your ears are from the recognized patterns, you know, like one kilohertz around there is similar to what the human voice is at. So if you have vocals, of course, you'd be messing around with that area as well. And certain instruments will, of course, uh, create a preference for that. So I'll go through each band of the EQ uh, between two through seven here and just adjust that. And I'm just restarting my uh, Ableton here so you can see it from the beginning. And you'll see over and over again, um, individually, what each band of the EQ sounds like. So the other thing you wanna do, just to make it easier in your mastering, is you notice up in the corner here, I have the loop um, up here. I'm actually going to loop um, my sequence. This is only 37 bars. I just made this just for the video here. And it's 37 bars, so when it is done, it of course will go back to the beginning. 
but I keep restarting it manually because uh, the beginning has some uh, sound in it that is you know, a lot heavier than the rest of the track. So I want to get uh, want to focus on your highest output volume area of the track is where you want to kind of set your ground point for mastering because everything else will fall behind that. Right, so notice how I'm looking at the gain here and I'm making that adjustment to see how that is here. Next, we'll open up another one, which is our uh, compressor. Our compressor, um, I set up a few things similar to the EQ. Well, one of them is, of course, I will tune out the individual um, bands so and slowly introduce them. Kind of the opposite of what I did with the equalizer. The equalizer, I, of course, started with one and increased it or decreased it. Well, I'm actually just going to decrease it so you can hear the other bands bandwidths of the input coming into it then kind of slowly adjust that until I see fit and you know boost if I need to as long as we're not getting distorted which is also that um, you know your green bars of course to the right of this effect you can see those and that's another way you'll gauge it you also hear it so if it starts to sound distorted or you're of course gonna turn it off um, notice while I'm adjusting these uh, just like on the EQ you'll notice it's um, the 12.5 kilohertz and the 37 hertz. It's that same uh, two things I used for the crossover, you know, your high point, your low point. I'm going to kind of have the same principles applied to uh, those as well. So then our next thing is we're going to go over and look at um, our ratios. You notice that they're all one to one ratio. And on this, I set this to be a soft knee here below. And of course, uh, what I'll do after that is I'm not going to use softening on the next uh, multi-band gate, opposed to uh, this one. Also, I have this at RMS, while the other one I'm going to have at peak. I have this on the A because I want everything to be above, where of course I can also uh, edit my ceilings for each uh, compression, low, medium, and high. Realize that the EQ and the sound of each one of those is going to affect our master output and affect our gain. So we need to kind of toy with our gain and check the two bars next to it to see if we're peaking. We set our time at 100 and we set our output. Of course it'll go into the red if I blast it all the way up, but if we move it down and you get it to be conservatively high enough, not so far that it's going into the yellow, maybe it's slightly into the yellow, but not into the red by any means. We're not going to worry about boosting it so much, just getting a good compression ratio on our output. Uh, the next one, the multiband gate, which is basically going to work as a multiband limiter, uh, opposed to other mastering software. This is the one we're going to push it a lot more, or we're going to push it all the way, you know, as far up as possible. Our adjustments we're going to make on there are similar to the last one, except for the soft knee is going to be taken off, because now it really doesn't matter how square we get the audio when it's done. So uh, we want it to be you know, higher volume, of course, because we're not dealing with the ratio. It's just getting the volume as loud as possible uh, without peaking. That's the whole goal of it. Basically, uh, our inputs, I'm going to zero those out, and I can make adjustments to those. Uh, you'll notice on the left, I'm not pointing to it, but the high and low crossover, just like on that uh, compressor, it's at 12.5 kilohertz and 37.0 hertz. So then we look over here at our output, of course, I'm going to adjust that, get that as high as possible without, of course, getting into the red zone too much. And that's where we go a little more wild with it. Um, you can make adjustments to the outputs on that, kind of leave all our inputs at zero here. And of course, you can do the master output like I'm using right here. I'm not going to make too many adjustments um, to the output since we did most of that in the EQ and the uh, compressor. But notice how I'm comparing things on the way in to the way out. You'll notice the uh, difference. So the next step we do is after, you know, if it, of course it sounds a little too distorted, even after it's been boosted, we can go back to the last output and of course change it so that it, as it comes in on, out the other end, it sounds a little bit cleaner while we still boost it. Because sometimes it can come out after the limiter, um, you know, boosts it a little more. It might make things a little bit distorted if you notice it in your ears. And that means you have to go back to the other output. Of course not changing other things like input stuff. That's just too much of a mess, but just compensating with the other output, lowering that a little bit. These, of course, we can go back to, go back and forth, kind of fine tune it. We're always going forward, never go back to really make adjustments unless you have to. Um, so, under the next one, we're gonna use the uh, 
independent um, limiter here. This is just a standard limiter that just adjusts, adjusts the gain. And this is the one we're really going to try as hard as to get as high as possible without peaking. But our goal is basically to get it to negative 1.5. The reason why is because doing songs for TV, movies, etc., especially dance music, which is what we're focusing on right now, is the main output of all modern dance songs, uh, even stuff that's on the radio, is usually on the input gain. It's coming into like the end limiter at negative 1.5. So our next step is we're going to look over at um, the input or the output coming out. The input, of course, the uh, limiter, but the output of the uh, last uh, limiter that we had going into the final limiter at the end here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make adjustments reaching that number that I talked about here, negative 1.5. So I'm going to adjust, of course, the ceiling or the end product on the uh, independent limiter. And then, of course, we're going to take uh, the output coming out of the multiband gate, of course, listening if, uh, if we have any distortion and making sure we're getting to that number, as well as looking at um, our output coming out on the other side as well. So, I'll adjust that. So next, we're going to go into creating another, not necessarily an effect, but it's just a display, dynamic display option called the Spectrum. But before I do that, I'm going to go into um, our independent limiter here. Just make sure your release is on uh, 1.00 or something around there. You basically want, um, it's kind of like the refresh rate that's going to, of course, affect the sound a lot. So. Back to what I said is you basically want it to be at like negative 1.5 on the yellow bar there. You can mess with your release too, um, like I said before, but I like to have it at uh, 1.00. But for the uh, spectrum, it's going to mimic everything you kind of saw on your EQ when you're starting out, but this will be the end product, so it's a little bit more important. So you'll notice the lines and everything. Everything that's um, on here, if I have it at 16384, uh, you can see, of course, a larger amount of the spectrum and see where everything hits. So next, you notice on the spectrum, about one kilohertz is kind of like the human voice. And you'll notice, you know, the same similarities as you see in your EQ on here. But you'll notice a lot of patterns as you continue mixing for what frequencies end up in which parts of the EQ. You can, of course, adjust your graph um, and changing multiple parameters. But one of the things that will make a big adjustment is your actual mix. So you, after you master, you might notice, oh, now I need to kind of go back and forth and mix. So you want to adjust those levels in your mix, but be sure to then start from the beginning with your master and remaster all over again because it's going to affect that.